To all our partners of Andrew Mark Ministries in Uganda, we thank you and appreciate you for the financial support you render to us to take the gospel as far and deep in the world. Truly because of you, the gospel reaches the whole body of Christ. We speak a blessing unto your lives and families and exceeding prosperity. And if you understand these things, you can stop Satan in his track. It's up to you. Thank you for that thunderous silence. Everybody's redrawing their charts right now in your mind like, well, this is not what I thought. But man, God gave us power and authority. And just look at this world. Look at the terrible things that are happening. This thing that I mentioned about them killing infanticide in New York. People say, why does God allow that? God doesn't allow it. We allow it. This is how committed God is to his word. You know, I used these verses last night, but Psalms 138 verse 2, God has exalted his word above his name. Psalms chapter 89 verse 34 My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone forth out of my lips. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 He upholds all things by the word of His power. God will never violate his word. He's exalted his word above his name. At the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess. The name of Jesus is a strong tower. It's powerful and yet his name is no better than his word. If he doesn't keep his word, then his name is useless. God's word is sacred to him, and he does not want infanticide in New York. He doesn't want murder and killing. He doesn't want all of the ungodliness that we see happening. But it's not up to him. It's up to us. He gave us this authority and power, and it's because we... Are cooperating with the devil sometimes because we are over here doing our own thing and entertaining ourselves and not engaged that we are allowing the ungodly to do these things. We are the ones that allow it. And God's not going to just sit here and violate it. The church as a whole is praying and saying, Oh God, send revival. And you're praying that God would somehow or another just rain down righteousness and people would automatically start living godly. But you wouldn't dare go talk to your neighbor because they might roll their eyes at you. 
You wouldn't dare stand up at the water cooler when everybody's sitting here and talking about all of this ungodliness. You wouldn't dare stand up and say what the Word says because they might call you a religious fanatic. And therefore, you are the one that's allowed it, not God. God only flows through us. God does everything that he does through a person. You can go back through history, not only biblical history, but secular history. Dwayne talked last night about the first and the second great awakening. I can attribute that to people. Jonathan Edwards, George Whitfield, John Wesley, you can put people to every one of these things. This nation was founded because people stood up and took a stand and pledged their life and their fortune and their honor to something and they did something. God always flows through people and if you're just praying, oh God, send revival and if you aren't doing something, your prayer is useless. I know that I'll get criticism for that because people have enshrined prayer to where I, I'm going to do all of these things. You're a great prayer warrior, but you wouldn't dare stand up and vote. You wouldn't dare stand up and talk to your neighbor. I'm telling you, that's useless. Faith without works is dead. Faith without corresponding actions is dead. This is why your body is so important. I got a new watch that I can't... <laughs> I have to push a button to read it. Anyway, I got six minutes. This is why your body is so important. When you're fighting sickness, don't lay in bed and act sick. And don't talk sick and then pray for healing. Use this body like a weapon. Man, I'm going to get up and get out of this bed. I'm going to act like a well person. I am not going to empower the devil through acting sick and talking sick. Man, I'm going to resist the devil. I remember when, when I was just getting started and 
and I was painting a house and Jamie and I, this is back during our poverty days and we were struggling and I was going to be paid that day but at lunch I came home. Era kati nze ngenda kuwe chokula bilako. Nzuchu kile bisera bidie bie damu tufu nga tuchari wafu nyone mchala wange Jamie. Uh, nze nagena nganga ntindi mkusiga lanji nefu na ukose fuwe nafuna. Ngena nino kudake wakamu bisera bie 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 Sick. I had something like the flu and I felt terrible. I couldn't even stand up. And I told Jamie, I don't think I can go back to work. And she says, you are going back to work. We are getting paid today. And I said, well, pray for me. But she prayed for me, but then she put my arm around her neck and she drugged me through the house, dancing and praising God. And it first I wasn't cooperating, but she says, You are going to do this. And so finally I started acting like I was well. In about 10 minutes, I was well. And you got to use your body like a weapon. And we got paid that day. But there's a lot of people that you're acting sick, you're talking sick, you're thinking sick. Dwayne talked about this. You got to see. And it's not your self well. You got to see yourself that I am not the sick trying to get well. I am the well that Satan is trying to make sick. I have this power and you've got to start using your body and act and fight against things. You know, let me use one last scripture here to close out, but in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. It says, Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Verse 27, neither give place unto the devil. Most people interpret that. That God knows we're human and we're going to sin. And so he allows you to get in the flesh and get mad during the day. But just make sure you get it confessed every night before you go to bed. That is not true. God is not putting his stamp of approval on short term anger. When this says be angry and sin not, it's saying that there is a righteous type of anger. Did you know God gave you the capacity to be angry? Every person that's ever been born on this planet has a temper. Now some people control it better than others, but every person that's ever walked on this planet has the ability to get angry. That is a God-given thing. There is a right use of a temper. And so this is saying, be angry and sin not. 
There is a righteous anger, and don't let it go to bed. Don't ever let it rest. Keep yourself stirred up. Chovalabanti, waluagamanti o sungu walenga na yore mekono na akugamba. Ntwali wo engoza sayo busungu enunji. Beranga ori musungu wa publika seira. Toleka busungu bo kueba kaa. Norecho kuma o busungu bonga buwaka na yema nyekweza jibabu kwe samu. You need to be angry all of the time. Not at people, at the devil. Oteke doku wa musungu wa bubuli kasera ngeba kusangu li musungu wa bu. Na yesa agalo nyigireba antu wabula nyigira sitani. If you got to where you hated sickness, I hate this sickness. I refuse to be sick. O ino kutuka kuchigira nga o chawira dara kankubulile o kuruwala. Ngo gamba bana inze kamba bulile inze impala lila dara kuruwala. Saga la kuruwala. If you got to where you hated sickness, you would cease to be sick. But most people can tolerate it. We've got all kinds of things. We take medications and things to help us feel better. You know, if you believe God has given you that sickness, why are you taking medicine and going to the doctor trying to get out of God's will? That's just dumb. You need to hate sickness. And I'm, I'm going to say something. I hadn't got time to explain it. I'll let Dwayne sir, solve all of these problems here tonight. But you know what? I hate sickness as much as I hate sin. I wouldn't get sick any more than I'd go out and commit adultery. And so I don't have any control over where I get sick. See, you are cooperating with the devil because you don't understand your authority and power. I don't give in to sickness. I won't get sick any more than I'd go commit sin. I hate sickness as much as I hate sin. I don't get sick. I don't believe in being sick. I'm not going to be sick. Amen. You know, I've thrown up one time since Jamie and I've been married. We've been married now for what? 40? It'll be 46 years this year. 46 years. I threw up right after we got married and Jamie, you know, she's the kind of, if she feels, what I, that sounded bad, didn't it? <laughs> it wasn't because we got married that I threw up. But anyway... Jamie never understood how I felt about that because, you know, if she felt bad and felt like her stomach was upset, she would throw up to get it over with. Not me. She saw me throw up one time, and I mean, I'm a toilet hugger. I roll on the floor, I moan, I groan. It's just. I'd die before I throw up. That's one reason I could have never gotten drunk and had a hangover the next day. It just wouldn't have worked. But anyway... I hate that. And because of it, 
Man, any time I go to feeling bad, I mean, I get angry. I get to screaming, yelling. I am mad at the devil. I refuse to be sick, and because of it, I don't get sick. Inacho vola banti katwa luwe mberan zisikiri zamubula muwa ange kumaranti se simanya mbere mo kafunda katinga ndi mubi impuli da mubi ngaze na zena mbere dua kemire mbere neda au mfubo kula banti sopolo kusanga ngamoga na ngamchoke da bolichimu nganda buki de sitani o kula banti sopola kwe isanga muwa de inacho vola basiruara. There's a lot of you that well it's not that bad and you can take a day off of work and you have somebody. Bring you your food in bed and rub your fevered brow and treat you, and it's not so bad. You tolerate it. You cooperate with the devil. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. James chapter 4, verse 7. And the word resist means to actively fight against. Saying, dear devil, please leave me alone, is not resisting the devil. You know what? You got to get angry. Smith Wigglesworth was standing at a bus stop one time and he had a little elderly woman that was beside him and she had a dog with her and uh, she was waiting on the bus and she was telling this dog, she says, now go home, go home. She was real sweet, go home. And this dog just sit there and wag its tail. And so she kept saying, go home, here comes the bus. And finally the bus comes around the corner and she says, here's the bus, now go home. And the dog just wagged its tail. And finally the bus pulls up right in front of him and the door open and she goes, get home, like that. And boom, that dog was gone. And Smith said, that's the way you got to be with the devil. Smith That's resisting the devil. Some of you are saying, oh dear devil, please leave me alone. That's not resisting the devil. God gave you a temper, use it. Not against people, use it against sickness, use it against poverty, use it against depression. I guarantee you, when you get stirred up like that, you will see the devil flee from you. You are the one who gives Satan all of the power that he's got in your life. Quit cooperating with him and you will quit having the devil eat your lunch and pop the bag. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I want to invite our prayer ministry. Thank you for listening to the Gospel Truth Program. We believe that you have been blessed. Please call us on 0200-330-000 to pray with you or to make an inquiry or share your testimony with us. We speak healing into your body and prosperity into your life. You are blessed. Are you in sickness, in deep thoughts, drowning in depression? You feel stuck and nowhere to turn. Andrew Mac Ministries and Caris Bible College invites you to the healing experience. Every last Thursday of the month, starting at 5 p.m. at Park Royal Mall, 5th floor, 
along Buganda Road. God is a faithful God. When you believe on Him, your healing is always available. Your healing is today. <laughs>